remembrance for me is every day. It became a lot more personal when a friend of mine, a year older, joined the Royal Navy and then the Falklands flashed up. We used to have our instructors come and talk to us and tell us stories and one point I remember really hit home was when I, we were getting told a story by our instructor. He almost lost his life because he stepped on an IED and for that to happen to him and for him to still be here, you realise that there's quite a big selfless commitment. For me it's more, yeah, it's more about the loss of a friend I think and I just take take time that week to think about it, um, keep a picture of him, that's about it. Sadly, in the conflict, Stephen Ford was killed. Uh, and then of course, it's no longer just names on graves, it's actual people we know ourselves. To have a bit of time where you can just dedicate it to remembering people and people that were close to you, or even just people that made basically the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, I'm quite proud, not necessarily the decision to join, but of, of the things I did when I was there and the people that I worked with. Uh, quite remarkable individuals. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. With these words in the summer of 1940, Winston Churchill paid tribute to the fighter pilots of the Royal Air Force who conquered the German Luftwaffe in the Battle of Britain. But the war wasn't over. It wasn't over for another five years. These days, his words are used to encourage us to remember the fallen from this and many other wars who gave their lives to give us our freedom. Freedom of movement, freedom of speech, the freedom to make our own friends, to carve out our own destinies and to live our own lives. But who are these fallen? And on Remembrance Day this year, who should you remember? What should you think about during that two minute silence? There are cemeteries that are full of gravestones commemorating the fallen. Those soldiers who didn't make it home. So who do you choose? How about Joe Strudwick? He was born in Falkland Road in Dorking on the 14th of February 1900 and so named Valentine Joe Strudwick, although he later just used the name Joe. In January 1915, Valentine Joe Strudwick signed up to join the 8th Battalion Rifle Brigade, Regimental Number 5750. On the 12th of August 1915, he arrived in France. He was killed in action in West Flanders in Belgium on Friday the 14th of January, 1916. He was 15 years and 11 months old. The person who I think about on Remembrance Day wasn't a hero, and he didn't die. Well, not during the war anyway. Bill was a soldier in the British Army, stationed at Lucknow in India during the Second World War. His army life wasn't particularly hard, India was a British colony at the time and the life of a British soldier was fairly comfortable. No fighting in India at the time and he wrote every day to his wife back home. When the war was over, like most soldiers, he was entitled to the war medals that were issued to all who had served their country. But Bill didn't claim his medals. He didn't really think that he deserved them. His war hadn't been like the war of many other soldiers and he'd made it back in one piece. He'd missed the birth of his baby daughter, but that was about as hard as things got for him. It was many years later when Bill was retired that his grandson claimed those medals for him. The War Medal and the Defence Medal. Of course he should have them. Bill was a very quiet man in his later years, but I think he was secretly quite pleased. I said that Bill wasn't a hero. That's not quite true. Bill was a hero to me. He was my granddad. We called him Popper. He died 30 years ago, and I miss him to this day. Lance Corporal Cassidy Little, by contrast, was and is a very modern hero. So Remembrance Day and the act of remembrance changed an awful lot for me from the very beginning to where I am right now in my life. It started because my grandfather um, was, was at Normandy 
survived was at Normandy, it was very much an old guy's game. You, at the age of five, would stop and look at these guys and go, yeah, you fought for our freedom, but what, what is freedom, what is war, what is that sacrifice, we don't know, but let's write a poem about it for our, you know, grade three class. Then my father went and did um, the first Gulf War, and he was away for Remembrance Day, and I remember I was the only kid um, whose dad was away, who was at war during Remembrance, and everybody, and I can remember them saying in school, you know, let's all say a prayer for Cassidy's dad, who is at war now. It changed what Remembrance Day was, because it was no longer just old people. Actually, now, now it was my dad. Now it was my dad. So I joined the Royal Marine Commandos, um, and suddenly Remembrance Day becomes a whole different kettle of fish. Then Remembrance Day completely changes for me because uh, I'm blown up in Afghanistan and I lose um, some friends. And now, and now I have, now it's incredibly, now it becomes incredibly intimate because I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, one was a mentor to me, the other was a friend, to, well, one was a friend and a mentor, the other one was, was a friend and a, and, a, and a commander to me. So it just becomes much more personal. We spend our entire life never forgetting the people who didn't come back. That's what we do. You guys, as civilians, just have to give up one day. It only costs you one day. In fact, for some, one minute, one minute of silence. And, and that's really what Remembrance Day is, is the marked occasion where you stand up and say, we'll take some of that remembrance as well. So today, on Remembrance Day, who should you think about? You could think about rifleman Vincent John Strudwick, who died in the First World War before his 16th birthday. You could remember Lance Corporal Cassidy Little, who suffered life-changing injuries in Afghanistan. I'll be thinking about my granddad, my hero. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who you think about. It doesn't matter who you remember. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, it matters that you do remember.
plants fields the poppies blow between the crosses row and row that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in plants fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if you break faith with us who die we shall not sleep where poppies grow in plants fields They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you.
for you all tomorrow, weekend or today. Now I'm up in heaven looking down on you all. I'll always be there with you. You've been the best family any son could ask for. And I thank you for the life that I had. Granddad and Nana are looking after me now, so I'll be okay. Well, they're stopping me flirting with the birds. <laughs> I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Please don't be mad at what's happened. I did what I had to do, and serving the British Army was it. Again, don't be sad. Celebrate my life, because I love you, and we'll see you all again. Dad, thanks for everything. I love you so much. I hope I've made you proud, as that's all I wanted to do. We think often that Remembrance Sunday it takes us back to the First and the Second World Wars uh, and remember those who died during those wars. Well, we do that very specifically because we need and should continue to remember those who gave their lives, the ultimate sacrifice, if you like, to uh, maintain our freedom. Uh, there are many stories about those who, uh, who knew that they were probably not going to come back from a battle, but knew that they were going in order to buy the freedom, if you like, for those who should come after them. Grief is critically important to our own welfare and our health, and nowadays we talk very much about mental health. And grief over loss over someone and the grieving process is eminently important when it comes to maintaining our own mental health as well, so that we can carry on and do the good things that those we've lost would hope that we can and do uh, as time goes on. I talk to many people, of course, in my position about grief and we hold funerals and so on. I do say to people that if we didn't love, we wouldn't grieve. Grief is about love, one way or another. If we didn't love somebody, there would be no grief, no feelings about losing them. And that allows grief to happen. It doesn't save grief from happening, but it allows people to have the excuse to grieve. And that grieving is, is so important. This year, of course, we are commemorating the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Royal British Legion. The British Legion was formed in order to support those who were left behind uh, from those who, by those who had died, but also those who had suffered in the actions of uh, war and battle and conflict and so on. Uh, it's not just for the old soldiers, but also for those who are left behind by those who are lo lost. So it's part of that grieving process. Sometimes we need the help of others. Always we need the help of others to help us through uh, grief and, uh, and understanding of the way that uh, life works and death works. Uh, and I know these things are very much in the, uh, in the forefront of our thoughts just at the moment and certainly at this time of year. But we will celebrate again on Sunday at the Memorial in Northwood Park.
The First World War affected almost every household and community. Out of this shared experience came the many traditions of remembrance we know today, including the two minute silence and the wearing of the poppy. 2021 marks 100 years since the first national acts of remembrance. Back in 1921, the people who took part were not only remembering those who had lost their lives, but also hoping that the Great War truly would be the war to end all wars. Sadly, this has not been the case. And whilst our acts of remembrance rightly have their origins in the horrors of the First World War, the 11th of November is an opportunity to remember those who have given so much in conflicts since 1918. Thousands of men and women gave their lives in service to their country during the Second World War, in a conflict which touched every continent bar Antarctica. But since 1945, members of the British Armed Forces have served and have been killed or injured in conflicts in Kenya, Malaysia, Korea, Cyprus, Egypt, Brunei, the Yemen. Between 1968 and 1998, over 1,400 soldiers were killed and many wounded in Northern Ireland during a period of history known as the Troubles. In 1982, British service men and women gave their lives defending the Falkland Islands from an invasion by Argentina. More recently, British service personnel have fought in Afghanistan and Iraq. And due to the nature of these conflicts, hundreds of service men and women have received life-altering injuries. So when we wear a poppy or take part in an act of remembrance, it is right to remember those who gave their lives in the First World War. But we are also remembering those who have sacrificed so much, including their lives, in more recent conflicts. Remembrance honours those who serve to defend our democratic freedoms, our values and way of life. We unite across faiths cultures and backgrounds to remember the sacrifice of the armed forces community from Britain and the Commonwealth, to pay tribute to the special contribution of the families of those who served, but also to acknowledge those innocent civilians who have lost their lives in conflict and acts of terrorism. teacher. I'm very pleased when I'm invited to take part in our Remembrance Day service. Not only because I'm proud to be part of a school that honours this day in the way that it deserves, but also because my husband is an army veteran, part of the Princess of Wales Regiment, West Sussex. During our last visit, we ventured to the Surrey Hills to a lovely village, Holbury St Mary's. There we visited the Queen's Memorial Gardens for fallen soldiers. The Garden of Reflection. The 140,000 Flanders poppy seeds were sown and adorned the entrance to welcome visitors, and nesting boxes have been put up 
Spaces are being offered on trees and benches for people to place remembrance plaques. I stood and watched as my husband remembered so many of his fallen comrades. Today we remember. On the 9th of April this year, His Royal Highness Prince Philip died. On that poignant day, I wrote this poem, which was shared with Major Crane, Mrs. Kipley, and veterans in my husband's regiment. Today I will share it with you. HRH Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, 1921 to 2021. We thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir, before you go. There are so many things we want you to know. With your Hellenic charm, you serve to lead, always supporting wherever the need. To our Commonwealth you gave, come what may, with your constant devotion, your strength and stay. For three million young people, you nurtured their skills. You equipped them with stealth to climb life's hills. As Lord High Admiral, you protected the realm. As a nation, we were blessed with you at the helm. You cherished the environment with foresighted respect. Survival or extinction, your views always direct. As husband and father, your family grew into our monarchy with a bright modern hue. To our prince, our ambassador, our consort so strong, we give thanks that you have given to so many for so long. Goodbye, sir, and thank you. Very long proud service, uh, dating 167 years in total. They were mobilised for the Great War in 1914. Their first major action was in Gallipoli, the Gallipoli campaign, in August the 12th. On the first day of fighting, over 800 soldiers and officers were committed to battle. In the first day of fighting, over 300 people were killed. Later on, the Isle of Wight Rifles were disbanded in 1967, by which point they had earned themselves many military medals, military crosses, Distinguished Service Officers and mentioned in dispatches. To this day, the local regiments on the Isle of Wight have carried on the traditions in memory of the Isle of Wight Rifles. Behind me here is the memorial wall of the Isle of Wight Rifles, detailing all the names of the soldiers and officers that fell in the Great War. Today we remember the First and Second World War generations who came from all over the globe some 80 years ago to serve with selfless courage and patriotism. Today, we also remember the men and women who have served before or since those conflicts, rising to the challenge with humanitarian missions and also direct conflict. Remembrance is important because it's only because of the bravery of these people that we live today in peace and freedom. I will now lay a wreath on behalf of us all at Cowes Enterprise College in memory of those people. Thank you.